Hi everyone, I'm Farida. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here, welcome back to the Dental Radiology. Today we're going to talk about multiple separate radiolucent selections with well-defined borders that we see inside the jaws. Let's head it. Multiple separate radiolucency can be divided into categories. The first one that are anatomical structures and are normal. The other group are the pathologic lesions inside the jaw. So it's very important to differentiate these two groups from one another. The anatomic structures that can produce multiple separate radiolucency inside the jaws are focal osteoporotic, bone marrow defect, and multiple sockets post-extraction. Focal osteoporotic bone marrow defect inside the jaw is usually seen symmetrical or in both sides of the jaw. It is common in the mandible because the mandible, especially in the posterior part, the bone space are very big and the trabecular bone are much more lesser than the other parts of the jaw. So wherever the trabecular bone is less, the bone marrow space is bigger. This is an anatomic appearance. In women with osteoporosis, the bone marrow space is much more obvious. So multiple separate radiolucency that are seen bilateral in the mandible, our first guess can be the bone marrow defect. Number two, multiple sockets post-extraction. In patients that had extracted multiple teeth in the same time, this is how it appears in the radiograph. Mostly seen in the mandible because in the maxilla, the tribal pattern that is like a web net covers the empty socket. But in the mandible, we have less tribal that has a louder appearance, so the socket we see is much more obvious. The healing process starts from the lamina dura or the lateral part of the socket towards the center and it takes time to get to heal. The history of tooth extraction and also clinical examination in seeing the hole of the depression where the tooth was and it's now extracted, this can be helpful. As I said before, it is very important to differentiate anatomic structures from pathologic lesions. First, taking the history of the patient if they had tooth extraction during the past months or look for the previous x-ray if we compare the two x-rays before and after. If the radiolucency had not changed size and was there all the time, it can probably be the bone marrow space. But if the radiolucency is becoming larger, there is a doubt for pathologic lesions. The lesions that can commonly be seen as multiple separate radiolucency with well-defined borders are listed here. Number one, multiple cysts or granulomas. Number two, basal cell nevus syndrome. Number three, multiple myeloma. Number four, metastatic carcinoma. And number five, Langerhans cell disease. We are going to talk about each lesion step by step. Patients who have poor oral hygiene and have multiple tooth caries or have multiple retained roots because of the inflammation per apical papillitis starts, the inflammation can spread out around the apex and resorb the apical bone. So we see multiple separate radiolucency in the per apical with poor oral hygiene, multiple tooth caries and retained roots that lead us to the diagnosis of multiple granulomas in the apex. Multiple cysts or multiple conventional keys can be seen inside the jaws of the patient even with no syndromic symptoms like dentigerous keys, radicular keys, or even OKC. It can be familial. It means maybe one of the parents have the same history, but it is very important to know that there is no syndromic symptoms. So why am I insisting on syndromic symptoms? Well, we'll open that in the next pathologic lesson. 
In this panoramic radiograph, you can see multiple cysts in the mandible, starting from the left ramus, molars, and premolar area, the symphys, and in the area of the right molar and premolar. Clinical examination and history showed no syndromic symptoms, so we can say there are conventional keys. This radiopathy that you see is nose piercing. Compared to conventional keist, we have a syndrome called basal cell nucleus syndrome that is a hereditary abnormality and is occupying with syndromic symptoms. So in addition to multiple cysts of the jaw, we have the following findings. Basal cell carcinoma, that is the most common finding on the skin of these patients, that is the papule, or it looks like a bump, that is a skin cancer, it's seen on the face, on the neck, or in areas where it's exposed to the sun. We have skeletal abnormalities that are bifid rib, hypertelorism, that is a large distance between the eyes, frontal busting, that is an unusual prominence of the forehead as a protuberance of the frontal bone, and we can see mandible prognatism where the lower jaw is outward than the upper jaw. We can see ectopic calcifications in the jaw cyst, in the skin, and in the phallic cerebri. So if we see multiple cysts inside the jaws, look for these syndromic symptoms. If even one of them exists, we should think about the basal cell nervous syndrome. This syndrome is also called the Gorlin syndrome. In this panoramic radiograph from a child, we can see two cysts inside the mandible that are around the crown of the third molar and the canine. Both cysts have displaced and pushed down the associated teeth. In the posterior anterior skull radiograph, you can see calcification of the phallic cerebri. Both of these symptoms lead our diagnosis to a syndromic condition. The cyst seen in the basal cell nervous syndrome can be radicular keys that are in the apex and can be OKC or dentigerous that are in the coronal of the teeth. So we can have multiple dentigerous or multiple OKC inside the jaws of the patient with basal cell nevus syndrome. Basal cell nevus syndrome are mostly diagnosed in the childhood. If the cysts are OKC, they are more common to be recurrent. So after the surgery and removing the multiple OKCs, it needs to be annually followed up by taking panoramic x-rays. In this panoramic, we can see multiple cysts in both jaws. The cysts can be multilocular or unilocular. Okay, I'm going to stop the video right here and I will continue this section in the next video. So please stay tuned. Thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe. Press the bell button for getting notifications for my next video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Keep smiling and have an awesome day.